All right, I had a few guys with questions on repairing and wiring on uh, Palomar amps, especially the Palomar 300A. Um, I had one guy who said that um, his amp is shorting um, anytime you turn it on. Um, I would say the first thing you always want to do, uh, people who've seen my videos before, is change the electrolytic caps, the high voltage ones especially. And on the Palomar 300A, these two black ones here are the high voltage cap. These are replacement ones though. The original ones are a lot longer. They go um, pretty much the length of the board here. And I think they're white. But I'm not sure the color, but anyway, uh, the original ones go to this pinhole here and all the way across to this pinhole up top and it even covers these diodes so you don't even see them with the original caps. If you have those, definitely replace them before you do anything with these amp. Um, even if those are working now, those caps, they won't hold for long. Um, electrolytic cap which these are the lifespan is about 10 years and this amp is about 50 years old so um, replace the electrolytic caps first and all the second thing I would suggest is um, check the diodes here um, you could check a diode if you have a multimeter unpowered um, meaning the amp is unplugged and turned off uh, those two big resistors right here are bleeder resistors. So you uh, turn this amp off, then unplug it and uh, give it five minutes, which is more than plenty of time for it to discharge. And these two big uh, resistors here, that's their only purpose is to bleed off the charge of actually these high voltage caps previously mentioned. So, you know, uh, uh, unplug it, give it five minutes and uh, it'll be dead you don't have to worry about getting electrocuted or anything like that so uh, turn it off lead it and if you got a meter put it on diode which is that uh, blue symbol there above my thumb um, so this meter I already got it on there and um, I had to hit it again to get to the blue upper one there so I'm on diode test and usually the diode test you'll see a screen like this uh, with the overload and a positive here and it's got sound on this one and with the diode test if you touch the leads together it's gonna read something like that zero 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 and make a noise and that indicates a dead short and this OL here is indicating an open and with the diode I don't know how this is going to work. I'm going to need another hand. Um, if it's working correctly, and you put the uh, black um, probe on that side with the white band, if you can see that white band on the right of that one, and then the uh, red probe on the uh, other side without the white band, you should get about 0.5 or so, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, even 0 0.6 on the meter. Normally, if a diode is shorted, it will read again like that, indicating a dead short. If you touch your diodes the other way with the uh, red on the band side which in this case is on the left and the um, black over here on the right it should do nothing back into that original um, uh, screen where same thing as when you don't have the leads touching so you do that with any diode and if I go down to the second one I'm gonna try to move my probes I got that 0 0.4, 0 0.5 again, which is uh, indicating correctly. And if I just switch the leads, I have the open and you can go all the way down to four diodes. So that's the proper way to test a diode. Um, one other thing, if your amp has a dead short, 
try it with the tubes out this goes for um, any amp tubes short from time to time so uh, remove the tubes um, and then fire it up without the tubes in it and see if it still shorts if it does not then your problem is probably a bad or shorted tube um, I mean I said that backwards if it still shorts then your problem is uh, uh, well no I did say it right um, if you remove the tubes and the short went away that means your tube has shorted if you take the tubes out and um, um, it still shorts that means your problem is somewhere else in the amp and usually it's the high voltage and usually it's with these um, diodes here sometimes the caps and that's about it as far as shorts go one other question I had about this amp is the wiring and this one has a plug-in relay board and I made a wiring chart here of the wiring to this amp this is a Palomar 300A that matches that uh, plug-in board here so going across the board here pin 1 is ground pin 2 goes to the negative bias PC board which is um, that little board right there pin 3 goes to the SSB switch pin 4 goes to the receive amp switch or the preamp switch pin 5 goes to the operate switch pin 6 goes to the positive 12 um, low voltage and on this amp the low voltage is actually right here so uh, that would be the uh, positive 12 that goes over to that relay board pin 7 goes to the second pin of the receive amp switch one is in one is out pin 8 goes to the operate switch pin 9 actually goes to a coaxial uh, uh, line see them big black coaxes there that's going to be the drive out pin 10 is the radio in from the um, radio socket um, pin 11 is going to be power 11 and 12 tied together it's going to be the um, power from the tubes into that board into the relay and pin 1314 is to power out the relay into the antenna jack and then pin 15 is another ground I don't know if they're all configured that way but um, hopefully that gives um, somebody a little help you know with where some of the wires go this here is a schematic um, I kinda hand drew if you know how to read schematics maybe that'll help if you don't know how to read schematics it's too complicated for me to even go um, through it with you R1 is relay 1 R2 is relay 2 and R3 is relay 3 so I think that's gonna conclude um, this one on working on a Palomar 300A amplifier. Bye.